Who would you save? Brad Pitt or Zac Efron? Brad Pitt. Who would you save? David Beckham or Neymar? David Beckham. Okay. Lassie or Toto? I don't know who Toto is, so I'm going <laughs> to say Lassie. <laughs> who would you save, Lassie or Miley Cyrus? Hey, thanks for tuning in to talk number two, your brave soul to come back. <laughs> uh, last week, we started talking about the Trinitarian image in which we're created, right. and we alluded to the fact that humanity is the summit of God's creation, and that's what we're going to pick up today. So everything that God makes, if you look at Genesis chapter one, everything he creates is good, it's good, it's good. After day six, when he makes humanity, he gives us dominion over everything that he made. Fast forward to Genesis chapter 2 when God makes Eve out of the side of Adam. Mm -hmm. His response to her, seeing her, is this one at last, is right. bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So in other words, he acknowledges, he acknowledges her humanity. Yeah. There's something different about her. While mm -hmm. we have dominion over creatures, right. we don't have dominion over one another right right and and really you know the, the the things that God created for us to use you know um, and, and to have dominion over the birds of the sky the fish of the sea the grains of the field the, the earth those are all things for us to use but we're not called to use another human person you know that he Adam immediately recognizes the dignity of of Eve you know, um, uh, and so he doesn't use her, you know, in, in Genesis 2. He, it's the dominion over all the other days of creation. He sees her as a, as a suitable partner. Right. You know, St. John Paul once said that the only appropriate response to a human person is love. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else that God made is for our use, but never humanity. And John Paul also said that the opposite of love is not hate. Mm -hmm. The opposite of love is use. Yeah. It's the one thing we can do to each other that is so in violation to the dignity of the person because a person is the only thing that God created as an end in itself, right. an end in ourself. We are created for our own good. Mm -hmm. Everything else God created, he created for us, us. to use. Right. It, it gets its value from its service to mm -hmm. humanity, not humanity. Right. Humanity is made for our own sake. And unfortunately, we live in a culture that preaches that you can use another human being, that you can use, you know, use and lose, move on. You know, once you use something up, then move on to the next thing. And unfortunately, the culture that we live in, and teenagers really live in this culture, um, and it's a, a culture of lies, really, for us to use another human being uh, for a particular means to an end. You know, humans are not meant for that. You know, humans are meant for love. And, and we all know that you know, when we're being used, yeah. we don't like it. Something deep within us goes, wait a minute, that just doesn't feel mm -hmm. right. Whether it's, you, you know, you have a friend who only wants to come over when, you know, your mom's cooking gumbo. Yeah. You know, you just kind of feel a sense of being used and you know mm -hmm. that I'm made for something right. better than that. And I think, you know, Pope Benedict XVI, one of uh, my favorite things that he said was that the world offers you comfort, but you weren't made for comfort. You were made for greatness. And really, in, to put it in John Paul II terms, is that you were not made for use. You were made for love. And, and the greatness of that human love, that respecting one another's inherent human dignity. There's nothing you and I can do to get more dignity, right? We can't go out and, and kind of add to our own dignity. It's inherent within us because we are created in the image and likeness of a Trinitarian God who is madly in love with each of us. And um, when we respect that dignity in each other, that's when we can move towards you know, that common good and build the kingdom of God. And there are lots of implications here. You know, if we were doing a morality course, mm -hmm. it, you know, everything in Christian morality flows from this. Right. But this class is the Paschal Mystery. Yeah. Here's the relevance when we put it in this context. We're not just blowing sunshine your way. Oh, you're so wonderful. That's not the point. The question is, why would God 
take on human form and die for us. Well, only if we are as dignified as, as we're laying out. So this is a really right. crucial to understanding the incarnation of Christ and his willingness to die on the cross for us is rooted in this, man, I made them something special. Yeah. They're worth dying for. Yeah, it goes back to that idea that we were made very good. And Jesus is not coming you know, to earth to save the elephants or the zebras, as great as they are, um, but he came for us, um, out of love for us, because, like we said earlier, that we are the summit of God's creation. He stops. He rests. He says, I, you know, this is it. This is the pinnacle of me, you know, as God as creator. And uh, just to go on a little bit of a tangent, just for a minute or two, and then we'll wrap up. We're given dominion over all of God's creation. I would suspect, Adam, that that an animal rights activist and I would agree on 90% of mm -hmm. issues, but for very different reasons. Yeah. See, I think that we have to treat animals a certain way, not because they have rights, but because I have a responsibility. Right. I've been given dominion. I've been given mm -hmm. care. I have to treat all of this with respect because that's what it means mm -hmm. to be human. As a right. summit of creation, I'm given dominion. So we cannot abuse animals. Uh, if, if we're going to raise them for food, we need to slaughter them in a humane way. Right. Even our language betrays it in a humane way, a way right. that is well, not a, they're human not human. Beings. Right, right, right. Yeah, and, and my wife and I, we all often jokingly uh, argue about that because she refers to their family, their family dog, as as a person, and oh, she's a part of our family. And I said, yes, you know, the dog is a part of the family, but she's not a human being. You know, there's there's a difference. Um, and so we really, again, it kind of goes to the culture where the culture distorts so many things. And, and we, I agree with you that we need to respect um, animals, but animals are not human beings. You know, Jesus did not come explicitly to save them. He came to save us. All right. So, so these first two classes, we've looked at the fact that we're made in the Trinitarian image. We're made in the image and likeness of God, the Trinity, and that we are the summit of creation. Uh, next week, we're going to start looking at the fall because mm. uh, it's not all happiness and butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> so see you next time. Thanks, y'all.